Hey everybody, uh, Dave Consiglio here with Powerless Yet Unstoppable. Going to do a throw you a little curveball today, see if you guys can hit it. But before I go any farther, uh, we've got a new little feature here. There's a comment section. If you guys got any questions or comments that you want to make, type it in there in the chat and uh, we'll make sure to address it here and uh, have a good conversation back and forth. Before we go any further, let's uh, give it back to the good Lord and let him lead this conversation. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you again for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to uh, talk about you on this podcast. We thank you and praise you for the freedom that you bless us with here in uh, America. We just pray a blessing upon those uh, in other countries, Lord, that are fighting for the freedom to talk about you and those that are losing their lives because of you and talking about you. Give them strength, confidence, and courage, Lord, to carry on and spread the good news of you. We just ask that you lead this conversation, Lord, as only you can. Touch the hearts of those that listen to it and uh, touch the hearts of uh, Guy and myself as we talk about you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We're nothing without you. Everything with you. In Jesus' precious, powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, we had a special guest on today. Uh, am I live or are you live or are we froze? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm fine. I can hear you fine. All right. Perfect. My video might be froze, but it's all good. So we'll just keep rolling. Um, had a special guest. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't make it this morning, but I think God's timing is always perfect and always best. So the guest today is going to be Guy Newcomb and myself. Uh, Guy Newcomb has been a great uh, a great blessing in my life that the podcast wouldn't be uh, possible without him. Um, you know, we thank a uh, grateful for him every day, helping us put this podcast together, getting out on air. So uh, with no further ado, you know, Guy Newcomb, welcome to the show. We thank you for all that you do and uh, look forward to hearing a little bit about your story. Well, first off, I appreciate it. And, and you guys have been a blessing to me. I've really enjoyed the time that we've spent over the past, you know, few months here, just putting these things together and, and getting to see some of the people that, you know, come through and, you know, been a part of your life with, with whether, whether it's at Missouri State or whether it's in, in your past or, or Derek's past or something like that. I've enjoyed that. And, uh, I've enjoyed putting these things together. Most of the time, you know, I kind of just light off into the background, uh, you know, with, with the shows that I've done with, you know, going back to ESPN and now the Missouri Sports Network and KICK. I always felt like it, you know, the less I talk, the better. You know, it was about the kids <laughs> and about the coaches and, you know, about those people that, that maybe don't have a voice. I've got a voice. You know, when I, when I put something out, you know, whether it be social media or anything like that, you know, 40, 50,000 people are going to see it in 10 seconds. And, and a lot of responsibility comes with that. But I, you know, I've been a sports guy you know, all my life. Uh, you know, I grew up, I was born in St. Louis. Um, my grandfather built the 66 Bush Stadium. And so I grew up as a kid going to baseball games, going to football practices as a kid when, when the football Cardinals were still there in St. Louis, I would get picked up and taken to practice. So I, I grew up with it, and we moved to to Mount Vernon when I was in the third grade, and uh, still kept our connections with with St. Louis. Uh, my my family's background: my mom was raised Assembly of God, uh, my father was was baptized Catholic, and you know I still have my baptismal cam candles from when I was baptized uh, as as a baby, and so there was a little bit. They're kind of pushing, tug, you know, pushing tug a little bit, you know, where we're going to go to church, things like that. And my dad finally got to where he just, my mom then would just take us to church. And we lived out in a little town called Halltown, which the, you know, the population sign, you know, was on both sides of the same sign. I mean, you went, you just went through it like 40 <laughs> people. And we had uh, just gotten down here, you know, three or four years earlier and, got uh my sisters got into some mushrooms in the yard and had to go to the hospital and get their stomach pump and uh you know lady one of the nurses at the hospital invited us to to church at, at scenic drive nazarene church there in, in springfield missouri my dad would not go and my dad big football guy he had worked with buddy ryan he had was on the original staff at at evangel um, he had, he'd done a lot of things, you know, he was a head football coach at Lindbergh high school in St. Louis. Um, so he's a football guy and, you know, the pastor, 
uh, you know, often would ask, hey, you know, where's Keith? How come he's not here? And one day he just went home with us. The pastor did, and my dad went upstairs into you know, the master bedroom and sat there on the bed just watching football and a little TV. He didn't want to talk. So the pastor came up, sat right next to him, did not say one thing about church. Was there for an hour. All he talked about was football, and he left. Never invited him to church, did nothing. And so my dad decided to go and got him from that point. I was, I was uh, six, seven years old, and and we, you know, we were brought up in the church. Um, you know, we moved to Mount Vernon and went to an Assembly of God church of all things there there in Mount Vernon. And then, you know, I was fortunate enough to be a, a decent athlete in high school. Got an opportunity, got a full ride scholarship, play quarterback uh, in college, and. Went uh, went there, and seven weeks into my freshman year, I was diagnosed with with cancer. And it was it was caught because I got injured, you know, in a practice. So there's kind of there's that number one time where God kind of said, "Hey, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna save you, right here." Uh, they caught it early. It was the highest cure rate in the body. Um, I was out of school a, a year, but what had happened? I, had, I was a small kid, and I was five foot five, 120 pounds, my freshman year playing quarterback. And my senior year, I had gotten up to six foot, uh, about 175. Well, after that year of trying to stay healthy and going through the radiation, I would work out every day. My dad obviously had keys to the weight room. So I was in there working out every day, running, lifting. Well, next thing I know, I'm 6'6", 235. You know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm benching, you know, 325, and I'm squatting 550. And I just, I just turned into a man. And... Yeah, and I, my speed had picked up. I had, I had been an avid tennis player. It was all-state tennis in high school. So I had pretty decent footwork and speed. Well, I decided when I went back to college, you know, I'm not even going to play football. So I walked on the baseball team, and I was an average high school uh, baseball player at best. And I ended up hitting 439 in NCAA baseball and getting all regional and, you know, player of the year, newcomer of the year, whatever it was. Um and you know, then I met my my wife at that at that time, and uh, yeah, I went on to work for the Braves, Pirates, and the Reds for about six years. Finished my degree, got an education and in an alternative education situation. So I was dealing with kids that were really struggling, you know, not only in the classroom, uh, but just with just with their lives. You know, I'd have to go pick them up at home, and at eight o'clock in the morning, their their mom or their dad would be you know, inebriated or high and just didn't care about the kids, getting them to school. They, they had no interest in that. So that was an opportunity there for me to kind of witness and, you know, tell kids about God and pray and pray with them at, at that time. And, and, you know, we end up at the high school that I was at, our superintendent, he was in favor of this. Well, we get sued. Um, there's a lawsuit that's filed against, you know, our high school, our superintendent, because we had the Ten Commandments, you know, hanging in the cafeteria. And I didn't even know they were there. I mean, they were on a brass plate that you couldn't read from the floor, but they were there and somebody found them, went after us. So that was about a six-month grueling time where I, as an administrator, was trying to get locked doors and keep media people from coming in and affecting the learning, you know, of our kids. And then our kids got so involved in it and and, and that was a time when it was really tough. And then you had school board members who would call me at night and scream and holler at me because they were going to lose this lawsuit. Um, and it was going to be a substantial loss to them. And so I was taking, uh, you know, I was taking a hit, hits every night from, from board members and people in the community, you know, about that. So that was, that was kind of God saying, you're going to be persecuted. If you stand for me, people are going to come after you. And, you know, then I, uh, transferred. I went into special education here at Bolivar because my kids were coming up, and I, I was gone so much being an administrator, covering athletic, you know, athletic games and events and and things like that on the road. I just didn't have a lot of time at home, and you know, then then uh, my wife at that time started getting involved in outside things, you know, and and they were all good things: FCA, running marathons you know, getting her master's degree and her specialist degree, but she became, then she was gone all the time. 
and it just was something I was trying to fight to hang on to, and I could see it, you know, kind of slipping away, and and eventually it did, and you know, and 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 through that, you know, I turned to alcohol as a way to can kind of com- combat that, and you know, I was then in the last five years I was doing all the laundry and all the cooking, and she was gone all the time, and we would see counseling, we'd see our pastor, and and it was it just wasn't going to work. And because she wasn't going to give anything up and I had given up a lot, um, you know, to come back and be in the home more. Uh, she just wasn't willing to and, and maybe uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, you look back on it, just she just lacked a lot of self-confidence. And that was probably my fault, you know, looking back on it. And, you know, then unfortunately, uh, about eight years ago, I had a, a four wheeler accident. Um, I. Uh, out on a four-wheeler and rolled it and five of my ribs went through my lungs and fractured my skull and uh i woke up 30 days later at mizzou medical center and didn't know where i was or what had happened knew i couldn't walk um and had been diagnosed you know paralyzed from the waist down and 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 blind and they had told my family that's the way it was going to be but i could see you know I, I didn't know what was going on and i it was three o'clock in the morning and I'm in a strange place and I can't move. And I could reach the phone on the table next to me. And I picked up the phone and hit zero. Um, didn't know if I was going to get, if I was in jail, I had no clue where I was. And a lady that answered the phone, um, happened to be the mother of a guy that I played college high school and college football with. And she uh, said, guy, this is Phyllis. Uh, you've been in a bad accident. You've been here for a long time. She goes, I'll be up. Well, she called her husband and her son and my parents and coaches from around the region there. All of a sudden, they're all sitting in my room by 6 a.m. that morning trying to tell me what I what what had happened. And, um, you know, I, I was there another three months. I had to learn how to walk again. Um, and, it, and it really broke me down after dealing with the handicapped kids that I had dealt with and going to the different schools and and those kids uh, not being able to walk on a balance beam or be able to catch a balloon or hit a balloon. Uh, There were just things that, I mean, I knew the the tech part of it, why they couldn't do it, and and the brain part, why they could but I did, I couldn't understand it. And now here I am in that spot. I can't walk on a balance beam. I can't walk one foot in front of the other. I can't catch a balloon. And I'd stuck my hands under center in an NCAA football game and stood in the box in a baseball game, and now I can't walk. And I'm relatively young, and it just broke me down. And every night I would, I would, I would pray every night, you know, and it, and it wasn't, God, get me out of this. It was help me to understand. Help me understand why I'm going through this, why you've put me here. And that was the biggest struggle. Uh, was why I just want to know why I'm here, and it and it you know was revealed to me one night that God, you're not going to know why for a long time. You know I know why God knows why, but I'm not going to your guy Newcomb's not going to know why for a long time, and and the whys now are starting to become evident. Um, you know to me as I'm speaking at schools now, and I'm I'm part of 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 Powerless Young Stop. I made that connection with you and and Derek and and some of the wonderful people that we've had on here. And it, it's a great you know, honor for me to be able to be a part of this. You know, School Board Guy started in 2007, and it was selfish. I just want to know what was going on because you couldn't find anything in the papers anymore. And, you know, now I, you know, I stepped away from ESPN a year and a half ago, and I thought, now what am I going to do? You know, and then, and then a great friend, uh, you know, came to me, you know, a, a spiritual man. He said, guy, we've got to do this. This is going to work. And it's, you know, we've done it a year now. July 1, we started the Missouri Sports Network, and, and now we're at five and a half million hits in, in a year. And it's not anything that I'm doing. I mean, I'm just lining up interviews. I'm letting other people talk. I'm letting uh, do the kids talk, the coaches talk, letting them promote themselves, promote their programs. What they do with that, I'm giving them a platform. What they do with that is between them and God. 
I have my platform. You know, when I go and speak, you know, I get out of I get out of the hospital. I'm, I you know I go through the rehab, the rehabilitation for a year. Um, then I go to the schools and speak, and it's you know, ask me what what's what's it like? I said, well, it's, it's like playing a basketball game, and the entire first four quarters you stunk, you couldn't make a shot, you turned the ball over, but you hit the three at a buzzer, and you got to go to overtime, so you get another quarter, and <laughs> yes. it's. It's a great opportunity, and, and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And so I, I've tried to give back, give back to communities, give back to the people. Um, you know, I, I will, if people ask me to do something, I will, I'll try it. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do whatever I can for them. And it's, it's just been, it's, it's been a blessing. And I'm still, still kind of recovering from eight years of, I mean, I, I feel like I ought to just put a hospital bed in my bedroom and just because I'm, I'm, I wake up every day and something different hurts. But that's just part of getting old. Um, and it's, you know, when I was, when I was in high school and college, I could sleep for 18 hours in a row. You know, now I can't sleep for four hours when I get, getting up, being in a body cast. So the things have just changed so much <laughs> physically and you try and stay healthy and you try and stay on top of it. But I, I think most important is, you, you, you know, I go through Proverbs every day, you know, I read, I read a proverb every day, I, you know, um, and my relationship isn't where it should be with, with God, with Christ, but but it, it's getting better. And, and and being part of these podcasts and shows and getting just and I just sit and listen. You know, I'm in the I'm in the green room. I'm just listening, uh, listening on my headphones and and to hear uh, these young men and women talk about their faith. And I had great opportunities, uh, not only athletically but spiritually and and with platforms that I've had that. You know, I really need to make it the most of it that I can, and that's that's kind of where I'm at. And I know that was a really long answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, that was great. It's uh, I'm right there with you, man. I I, uh, I just I gotta pinch myself sometimes um, just to truly understand how blessed we are to have this opportunity, and you know, to kind of bring it all full circle. Um, you know, you touched on it a little bit, but. You know, getting that hitting the buzzer beater at the end and getting a second chance to go to overtime and make it right. Um, you know, it just kind of whispered in my mind as like the Holy Spirit was saying, you know, what'd you do with the life I gave you? And, you know, that's God at some point he's going to ask us when we meet him face to face. You know, what did you do with the opportunities that I gave you? Um, not just the talents that I bless you with or the effort or the enthusiasm for me. But like, what'd you do with, uh, you know, July 26th? What is it already? July, excuse me, July 28th already, uh, 2022. You know, what'd you do with the time that I gave you? Um, did you invest it in eternal things? Uh, like you said, was it uh, an initial selfish endeavor that turned more spiritual? And now it's like, and it's just crazy how God puts the pieces to the puzzle together. And, you know, again, looking back at when we even first started the podcast, you know, Derek and I met by chance at North Dakota State uh, pregame meal. He mentions uh, ESPN radio that he helps out with. And then I mentioned podcast. And three days later, the three of us are meeting in a back room uh, suite here in the stadium talking about how we get this done. Um, and then again, just, you know, my raspy voice as a strength coach and you know, there's nothing that says I should be here doing this right now. Um, you know, a part of my testimony, I kind of piggyback with what you said, but, you know, I dropped out of high, I had a couple D2 offers come out of high school, had a bunch of concussions to finish up my senior season. Those uh, scholarships were pulled, had nothing left. I was going to join the military. I dropped out of high school. Uh, fortunately, I had a, a coach, uh, as, as foolish as that sounds, had about six months left of school, and I dropped out because I was going to join the military or start uh, construction with my brother and just start making money. Fortunately, I had a coach that pulled me back in, knew what I wanted to do, knew where my heart was. And in that conversation, I knew I wanted to do what he did for me to young people and be that impact in their life going forward. And, uh, you know, so again, it's it's fast forward. You know, I failed speech class in college because I refused to get up in front of the class. Um, my heart beats out of my chest. I mean, I'll be honest with you, in front of team team meetings and staff meetings, like 
the, the, the corporate setting, that's not my forte. Like I'm a nervous nut. Uh, my voice, it trembles. My heart's beating out of my chest. Um, I've learned to deal with it. And I think my faith has helped. Uh, it's more reassuring now. When I get in those situations where I'm uncomfortable, it's a reminder to me to say a prayer, give it back to God and understand that I'm not doing it by myself. Um, when I do try to do it by myself, that's when I get into trouble because, you know, again, I'm trying to do it outside of God's blessing on it. And again, it's a great reminder. That's just so to me, you know, again, I'm, I'm right there with you. You know, the second chances you get in life, I've made a lot of mistakes throughout my young adult life and college and, um, you know, even my early, early on coaching career. Um, another side note for me, you know, when, when I was at UAB, we won five games in two years. I got married down at Birmingham, Alabama. And I'll be honest with you, I was I was not a husband you wanted to be around. I brought uh, work home. I was crabby. I was irritable. Honestly, my wife had every reason to leave me if she wanted to, um, because I just didn't uh, pour into her like I should have as a newly married couple. Um, you know, but thank God she she stuck it out. She's still here. We're, we're strong. We've got three amazing kids. Um, but I guess I say that too, you know, long winded answer and comment back to yours. But it's crazy and awesome to see how God can turn our garbage um, into blessings. And, uh, you know, I think that's the title of this, this episode here today. It's just simple, count your blessings. And, uh, you know, a lot of times in life we get focused on things that don't go our way. But even when they don't go, quote unquote, our way, it's an opportunity to open our eyes and see how God's going to move and make things happen. Um, you know, again, just to, to put it all into perspective, uh, there's nothing that says I should be here at Missouri State. Uh, I played D3 football. I didn't know anybody at the Division One level. Like I said, I dropped out of high school for a minute. Um, I had good grades going into college. Then I let them slip. Woke up one day. I graduated. I'm about I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And then I fell in love with the weight room. Um, but if you would have told me 10, 15 years ago, you know, when I dropped out of high school that I'd be working for Coach Petrino at Missouri State with these great athletes, um, you know, these great coaches doing a podcast, talking about faith, spreading the good news of God. Um, I tell you, there's no way possible it's not happening. And, and again, the, the, the big reminder there is uh, don't put limitations on what God can do. Just take your hands off the wheel and let him take control. So yeah, I got and I, and I, I, go ahead. Oh, I was just say I was I was fortunate to have those coaches in my life that you know I still look back at as as you know saw their walk with Crush Skip Brock at Mount Vernon, Tom Cox, you know at Mount Vernon, my own father uh, as well, and and you know had those people you know in my life that were pulling for, for me, uh, you know even though I was having some problems physically and mentally, and some of those problems I've created myself, but. Uh, you know, some of them were, were, were just things that happened and circumstances that, that occurred and able, you know, family meant a lot to, you know, to pull me through that. And so we'll, uh, you know, I still talk to my, I still talk to my dad every day, sometimes two or three times a day. Uh, you know, my mom as well, and my sisters will call and check on me. And, and, uh, so it's, it's, you know, I, I'm in a good spot right now and, um, you know, with the platform that I have, there's a lot, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. No doubt. Well, and that, uh, that kind of leads me into, I got to touch base on, you talked about Proverbs, but I do want to ask, um, you've got a, you've got a huge heart. Um, so I'm going to circle back to this Proverbs, uh, Bible verse here, but I do want to touch on just your compassion, your kindness. Um, and where, where did you get that from? Um, I think knowing you, I probably have a good understanding, but um, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the compassion, the kindness and uh, and where that all came from. Kind of tying it into, like you said, you read Proverbs a lot. Proverbs 1921 says many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. And, you know, just to tie your story and my story. And that's just scratching the surface. I'm sure you got a billion details within there and me as well. But I think the ultimate story and, and the, the ultimate 
lesson to be learned is to keep that in mind. You know, we might have plans for our lives or ideas or thoughts of where we need to go, but ultimately it's God's plan and purpose that's going to prevail. And, you know, one thing that's been on my mind is if you think of a straight line, right? So to go, go from A to Z in a straight line, let's say that's God's path for you. And if you stayed on God's path, you could fulfill his purpose and plans for your life in, let's say, a month, a day. I don't know what it might be, but you're just staying on that narrow path. Every time we deviate from the path and try to do things on our own, it just delays the amount of time until we can get to that finish line with him. So what I'm saying is, and it's an eye opener for me, it's like God might have intended this podcast to start in my life four or five years ago, but I wasn't mature enough to do it, um, didn't have proper people in my life, right? But because I deviated from God's plan for my life and I tried to do things on my own, it took me longer to get here to this spot with you, with Derek. And ultimately, honestly, not even just the people, but for me personally, having a, a mature enough faith, you know, the last thing you want to do, and I'm not perfect by any means, trust me, I make mistakes every day, but there's accountability with it. Like you said, you know, we're on here talking with young athletes, young, young men and women, um, you know, other coaches. There's, there's a level of expectation and accountability that goes with it. And the other part is it's like we got to be strong and we got to be sharpening our faith each and every day if we're going to get up here and talk about God's word. Um, the last thing we want to be would be hypocritical in a sense that, you know, we get up here teaching and preaching one thing on a Thursday. And then the minute I get off of here, you know, I'm losing patience with my girls or I get in the car and, and road rage, whatever it might be. Um, but but you're exactly right. It's, it's just it's that accountability that comes with it. And, uh, you know, I just I don't know. That's been weighing on my head, in my mind and my heart doing these podcasts. Just if, if you could see God's plan and picture for your life, if you did everything everything that he asked you to do on a consistent basis, how much faster you would get to your ultimate God-given purpose for your life versus when we deviate from it. Um, again, it's one of those things. God could have something for you and design for you to experience tomorrow. But if you take too many sidesteps and detours today, you might not get there until a year or two or three or four. <laughs> But uh, anyway, sorry, that was a long, long-winded answer on my end. But want to circle back, guy. You, uh, like I said, you got a big heart, man. Where, where, uh, just every, I don't know, everything. Every time I'm around you, I can just see you reaching out to people and kindness, compassion. Um, where, where'd you get that? Who instilled that in in you? And you know what, uh, what kind of motivates you to just just be that person to kind of bend over backwards for others, other people in your life. Well, I think that probably comes from my mother. I, I can remember, you know, when I, until I was probably in the third grade, you know, I went to a very small school. I was the only boy in my entire class. And then when we moved to Mount Vernon, then you get, you, you got to see more students who were uh, not as fortunate as you, uh, you know, some disabilities and some things that I did not understand. And I can remember coming home you know, a couple months into, into that move and just tell my mom about this, this, this kid in class who couldn't walk and he had to be in a wheelchair and he couldn't talk and he couldn't write and just things like that. And I, and I said, I, you know, I don't understand that. Why, why is someone like that? What happened? Why would God, why would God allow that? And she said, are you know, do you feel sorry for him? And I said, yeah, how come? And she goes, guy, you should never feel sorry for them. You should envy them. I said, what? She said, he's got a one-way ticket to heaven. He will never reach the age of accountability. You're going to struggle all your life to be accountable to God. He will never reach that age. He has a one-way ticket. So when you look at, at him or I look at, at, at that, those types of situation, I just, I don't mind going up and talking, hey, what's going on? You know, how are you doing? You know, because... I'm envious. They have a one-way ticket to heaven, and I will never forget that. And, you know, I I don't like to see people hurting. I don't like to see people uncomfortable. Um, 
you know, I'll talk to anybody, you know, but a lot of times I'm kind of standoffish. I don't reach out a lot of times and I, then I, then I leave a situation. You know, I probably should have said something to someone there and I, you know, and nobody knows what's going on with me or, and I don't know what's going on with everyone else, but just, just to reach out and just say, Hey, you know, how you doing? How you feeling? You doing all right? Anything I can do for you? Um, and you know, there's times where I, I haven't done that. And I wish I've had, but, but most of the time, you know, I will, I will do that. And I think that's where that, that comes from is just, you know, that was instilled by my mother who, I, who's a brilliant, um, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to the Bible, I, I can remember she, she won me a, a debate in high school at the, at a, a conference or maybe sectional level, uh, on capital punishment. And she said, what you, you you know, I said, they're going to tell, they're going to say that, that God was not, you know, he was not pro capital punishment. And how am I going to just, you know, how am I going to defute that with, with the Bible? And she said, go to Matthew where there's, where they where Christ is hanging on the cross and he's got guys on each side of him. And the one says, Hey, if you're the, if you're the Christ, uh, get us out of here. And the other one says, Hey, he's done nothing wrong. And Jesus looked at him and said, today we'll be in paradise. Well, he didn't send him right then. That guy had to die for his sins on the earth. He had to die for what he had done, but he went right to heaven. Christ could have sent him right there. If he was anti-capital punishment, he would have sent him right then and wouldn't have waited. And we won the debate because of that. And, you know, it's you know, my mom and still someone I can go to today and, and ask. You know, she's a published author. She's, she's brilliant, member of Mensa. Um, but just a kind hearted, uh, woman. And I think that's where I get it. Nice. That's, uh, that, that's, that's critical to have that foundation at home. And, uh, you know, I've met your dad a couple of times and I can genuinely see and definitely see that, uh, there's a lot of similarities between you two, which are, which are nothing but fantastic and great. Um, within your story, there's so many different levels um, of adversity and heartache, um, but also a lot of triumph in between all of that. Can you just tell us a little bit, like, how did you, how did you not get bitter towards God? Or even in those moments when you maybe did get bitter at God, how did you find your way out where you could just understand that, you know, again, like Proverbs 19.21 says, it's not your plan be done, but it's God's plans that's going to be done. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I was, I was bitter and hateful when I was in the Mizzou Medical Center. Um, I was, I couldn't understand it. I didn't understand why me. I had never hurt anyone in my life. I hadn't, I mean, not even physically. I hadn't, I had never, I was never in a fight in high school. And I mean, I was just the guy that I was the mediator. And, and part of that was being the quarterback. And part of that was being your dad coaching there that, you know, and then, and then the upper class would watch it. So I was never that guy. But when I was stuck in that room, once I got to where I could walk, they would lock me in that room on the sixth floor brain injury unit at Mizzou Medical Center. I was locked in and could not get out. And I would have to call, and they would have to come down and unlock my room. And then the, the ends of the hallways were locked where I couldn't get off of that floor. And that went on for weeks. And I, I kept saying, why, why am I locked in my room? I'm not me. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm not going to. They said, yeah, but guy, you're, you're six foot six, 240 pounds. If, if you get where you're not going to go back and not going to go to your room, we're, we'd have to hurt you to make you stay in your room. And I said, well, just let me go home. Well, you can't go home. You can't, you can't hardly walk. You can't, there's nobody at home for you to, to take care of you, to watch you. We've been instructed to keep you here until you can take care of yourself. And then eventually I got to where I could go outside the hallway, get on the elevator and go down to the first floor and walk around in the gift shop. But if I ever went outside the building, then I was going to be locked back in my room. And I just gradually got those things and it, and it was tough, you know, and I would pray every night, God, let me, let me go home. I just want to go home. You know, all I had to do was pass these tests that they had. And, 
Um, so I finally got to go home and, uh, and every, and, and I couldn't work. I couldn't, uh, you know, I wasn't on the air, you know, for another probably three or four months after I got home. Um, I couldn't drive. Um, so I would, I would sit at home all day long by myself and, and pray and study the Bible. And it just got me so much closer. And then things started happening. I started healing. Um, I got to where for the longest time I could not, I could not get, put my thoughts together. I'm struggling with that right now, but I couldn't put my thoughts together because of the brain injury. I could not be in a room with more than three or four people because I, I got overstimulated and it would, it would drive me bananas. And I've gotten better with that. I mean, you and I sat in a room with, with 300 people with, with Derek's deal with the whosoever's in Mount Vernon. And, and I struggle with that stuff a little bit, but I'll just close my eyes and just say, God, take this from me, you know, right now. And it, it's, so a lot of it's just, it's been that prayer and then reaching out to people and saying, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. And, and they, they would give me a Bible verse or they would say, I'll pray for you or something like that. And I felt that stuff. Um, so that that's kind of how I dealt with it, and it's I mean it's remarkable that that I'm here where I'm at right now. I haven't had a job in eight years, and uh, unfortunately, with with sponsors and the things that I'm doing in the different towns and the communities and things like that that I'm covering, um, and it's something that I enjoy doing. Uh, I'm a numbers guy. I'm not much as far as giving speeches. But I'm a numbers guy, and I can put information out. And, I, you know, I will do that and I enjoy it and, and I'm, I'm making money and I'm promoting good people while I'm doing it, whether it be Pizza Ranch here from the studio that you go in there and you hear the Christian music in the background. It's good food. You know, the, 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 the people that they employ that you need to go into a Pizza Ranch and look at some of the, of the kids and the people that are walking around pl- picking up plates and, and vacuuming the floors and things like that. They have reached out as well and gotten people involved. And I'm just so fortunate to be involved with them. Amen. Well said, my friend, uh, we got a couple minutes left here. Uh, it's amazing how time flies doing these episodes, but, um, again, man, I, I greatly appreciate you. I love you like a brother, man. I, I can't imagine, uh, you know, doing this without you. There's no way. And, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm grateful that, uh, that God brought, Derek Barnes into my life and he introduced me to you. Um, you know, I haven't told you before, but I've learned a lot of things from you just in our interacting. And, you know, like I said, your big heart, um, to be honest, it kind of reminds me, uh, you know, of my brothers and my dad and just kind of how we were raised, you know, looking out for those uh, around us. Um, you know, not that we're the most well off by any means, either one of us, but it doesn't even have to, you don't have to have money to have compassion and care and kindness in your heart. Um, it, it's an attitude and it's a relation. It's intentionality. Um, so, again, man, I thank you. Uh, thank you again for everything you've done for us. It's, it's been an amazing ride, and, and we look forward to continuing on that journey with you. It's been an honor. Absolutely. So uh, we'll wrap up here with uh, the FCA Overtime. Today we're going to talk uh, – the title of the devotion for today was when the world, when the whole world sings and uh, the Bible verse comes out of Revelation 5, 9. It says they sang a new song saying with your blood, you purchased for God's persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. And uh, it just talks about at the end when uh, Jesus comes back and we're celebrating and the whole world sings his praise. Bible says whether you believe or not, you know, every tongue will confess, every knee will bow at the greatness of God. Uh, A couple of questions to consider, you know, what gives you cause to sing? You know, I think that ties in. I couldn't have even planned this any better, but what gives you cause to sing? In other words, you know, what blessings are you grateful for? Count your blessings. Um, I think even in the the hardest of times, um, sometimes we focus on the negative circumstances in our lives and we lose sight of all the positive and the blessings. And it reminds me of one sermon that we had around Christmas time talks about, you know, Jesus being in the stable, being born the humblest spots ever in a manger, not a big old, you know, crib or a bed somewhere, not a mansion. It was a manger, a stable. 
But it said we don't focus on the the crappy situation or circumstances around the manger, right? Literally, the 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 poop, the animals, all that stuff. The main focus was all on Jesus, and it was the gift, right? The greatest gift to this world and to humanity, which was baby Jesus in that manger, in that stable. It's the same thing for our lives. We have so many blessings on a daily basis, no matter what you're going through. You wake up, you have air in your lungs, there's a heartbeat in your chest. Those are two blessings right there that you can thank God for. If you're able to walk, talk, breathe, um, it's another opportunity to give back to God and uh, use that time to glorify him and build his kingdom. Uh, secondly, he says, what happens to your heart and mind when you embrace John's vision of every created being singing in united praise of the lamb and his love? Um, right there, that, that just it brings hope. It's the biggest thing I can think of is hope. Um, joy, comfort, and uh, just passion, enthusiasm. You picture every every created being singing praises to our creator and God. Uh, it's nothing like it. It's unimaginable. So with that said, again, FCA over time, when the, when the whole world sings out of Revelation 5-9. With that said, uh, give out our shout outs and thank yous again, Missouri Sports Network. Guy Newcomb, again, thank you very much. Uh, couldn't do this without you. Thank you for being our guest. Uh, heavy Construction Labor's Local 663, uh, Derek Barnes and Company. Uh, love him dearly as well. It's, it's It's been awesome to build these relationships and uh, genuinely come together for, for God and a bigger purpose than ourselves. Uh, Pizza Ranch, again, down uh, Battlefield Mall, Missouri here, Southside uh, Springfield. Brian Tooker has been a great uh, addition and blessing in our lives as well. Get out there like a guy recently said. Great people, great staff, great food, and uh, great atmosphere. They just play worship music on the radio. Um, if you're looking for a, a pick-me-up in the middle of the day or night, head out there and uh, get some good food. Be surrounded in great atmosphere. Uh, with that said, as we always say, until next time, keep a smile on your face, joy in your heart, and Jesus on your mind, and your body will show it. With that said, we'll break it out in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you again for this day, this opportunity. Um, I thank you and praise you for Guy Newcomb and uh, Derek Barnes and the people you've brought in place here to help uh, get this podcast up and going. Uh, just pray a special prayer for Guy Newcomb, Lord. We, we pray that you touch his mind, touch his heart, continue to bless his efforts to, to glorify you on a daily mm -hmm. basis and everything that he does and says, bring honor and praise to your name. We thank you and praise you again for the freedoms to talk about you. We just ask that you watch over those that are less fortunate, Lord, that may have to do it in hiding or fearful of their losing their lives. Uh, may we all be confident and courageous to stand up for you as you did for us on that cross. We pray a special blessing for those uh, in the audience, Lord, those that have faith. We ask that you strengthen it. Those that are lacking faith, we ask that you awaken it as only you can. Allow us to be a light for you in this dark and cold world, Lord. We love you. We praise you. And until next time. Bless our efforts going forward. In Jesus' precious, powerful name we pray. Amen.